Okay. So we'll cut that one a bit short because Aussie's a bit long-winded. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, another story? Um. Let's see. Okay. I remember the first time, um, well, you know, we, back on the other site, um, <laughs> I remember the first, you know, we had that chat room and we would always, you know, kind of talk and she would always just kind of sit there, just kind of as this force. And then she would just kind of pop in with something really funny. Mm-hmm. And I had just delivered a topic on dream catchers. And I don't really know what made me approach her, but I emailed her and I asked her if she wanted one. And she was like, yeah, sure, and started listing all of the things that she liked. Because I asked her, you know, what colors do you like? You know, what are some of your favorite things so I could get an idea? And she started listing graveyard artifacts. And I'm like, how in the hell (laughs) am I going to get that? And uh, then in the same email, she start, or she starts listing off things that her sister likes. And I'm like, wait, what? So instead of making one dream catcher, I've made two. <laughs> Aww. And apparently her sister didn't know that um, Ellie had told me all of this because she's like, how did she know? How did she know that I like green? And... <laughs> All of this, but um, I did manage to get one graveyard artifact, and this one hits a little closer to home. Um, back when I was 11 years old, um, shortly before I was diagnosed with depression, another friend of mine passed away uh, from cancer. I don't remember the type now. I was 11. Mm-hmm. Um, she'd battled it for a while, and uh, every year on the anniversary of her death or close to it, whenever I could get out there, um, I would go visit her grave. Well, shortly before um, I made this dream catcher, I went to the graveyard and for some reason that just popped into my head. And I was, I was talking, you know, I talked to the graves and I, I was talking, I was like, you know, I have this friend who wants me to make her a dream catcher, but she wants, you know, things on it. I just, I don't know what to put on it. There was no breeze. I told her this, too, and she thought she was absolutely shocked and blessed when Mm -hmm. I told her this. And you'll see why in a second. Um, There was no breeze. There was no explanation for it. But on her grave, there was an angel with um, wind chimes uh, uh, in the shape of a a harp. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. And out of nowhere, one of the... uh, chimes falls off and hits my foot wow so it was kind of like she was saying give her a piece of me and so I took it I put it on there and I sent it to her and when I told her that she was just she felt so blessed and so you know and that's when she and I really started to become friends because that the you know the friend that had passed on before she was a very very big part of my life and it was kind of like she was accepting this new friend and that meant the world to me oh completely oh how beautiful ah let's see hmm I can remember the first chat I ever went to on the other site with that other person. Um, I'm sitting there and, you know, not expecting anything in particular, scared out of my brain, thinking, you're all a scary bunch of people, oh my god, oh my god. And then all of a sudden, they muted everyone. It's a chat room, and they'd muted everyone. And then they came back and they unmuted us all and they're like, ha, 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 don't all be so quiet. And it's like, oh my god. (laughs) And they just randomly do this, you know. Just because they can. Because they can. I'm thinking, oh, that's just fantastic. I wish we could do that in Exit, but we can't. (laughs) No. And 
and I'm going to share a few stories now that, um, like Ziggy and Robin have told. Um, the first time Ziggy had to present a topic in front of the group, which it's really nerve wracking, especially if oh, it's yeah. your first time. Uh huh. <laughs> I mean, online or not, it's still pretty nerve wracking because everyone is watching. And she was talking to Ellie, and she told Ellie that she was really nervous. And Ellie told her, just picture everyone naked. <laughs> <laughs> and Ziggy was like, I don't know what anyone looks like. She goes, well, there you go, even better. <laughs> <laughs> Dear. And then um, on that same site, um, Robin... <laughs> And I, I noticed this, too, and I had the same thought, and then I found out the story later. But there was this one person who had, because, you know, on the on the old site, you, could, uh, you had the choice between liking something and smiting it. Mm-hmm. So you could give blood drops for if you liked it, and you would smite it if you didn't like it. Well, sh- this person had, like, no blood drops, but, like, a crap ton of, of smites. And no one could figure out why this person was so hated and still a member of the administrative team. (laughs) (laughs) And so finally, you know, I was like, okay. And Robin apparently asked too, but I was like, why? (laughs) And she's finally like, well, you know, I just wanted to be the most smited person on the page. You know, if I get a whole bunch of people that hate me, I must be doing something right. (laughs) (laughs) So she would try and collect as many smite points as possible. Oh my god. I think it just ended up being this whole big thing. You know, if you really love her, you'll smite her. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, I can remember when I was put onto the administrative team on that website and she did warn me. She said, people will change their view of you because I will ask you to make hard decisions. And, (coughs) you know, you may have to ban someone. You may have to take them off the site. You may have to go and delete something that they love. And, you know, it ended up that it didn't exactly happen on that site. It happened on TLC, but it happened. Mm-hmm. So, you know, she was she was correct, you know. People see you differently when you have to see yourself differently. Mm-hmm. I mean, even if they don't want to, because you have to look at yourself in a way that... No, I'm trying to make myself better. I'm trying to do the best that I can right now. So if you can't be okay with that, then, you know, maybe you need to take a step away and and just let me get on with my work. That's one thing that she really taught both of us, I think, Mm. is how to be confident how to see yourself in a different light, whether it be good or bad. And I remember when TLC, or right before TLC was created, and just how she was talking about what she wanted on the site, she wanted everyone to feel special. She didn't want one to be above the other. And she never picked favorites, not really. Mm Mm-mm. I mean, she would make you feel like you were the most imper- important person of her life, but, you know, she would, she never picked favorites. No. And, you know, she's like, I want everyone to have a job. I want everyone to have a position. I want everyone to contribute something. I want everyone to be able to put their name on it and say, I'm proud of this. You know, this isn't my website. This is our website. Mm. And, you know, when she ended up getting sick, the the role came to me, and I must admit, I don't think I did as well as she could do, but then again, I'm also not Ellie, so, you know, yeah. she, she's a one in a gazillion person. So, you know. With, I, think I think she was proud of what you did do, though. Thank you. And I'm Actually, very... I, I know she was because we would have like little talks, and I don't think I ever told you this, mm. <clears throat> but we would have little talks off to the side, like through text message or whatever, before she got really ill. Hang on just a second. <clears throat> Sorry. Season's changing. 
<laughs> um, but, you know, we would talk about you a lot. And she was just like, yeah, I know that Belinda takes a lot on her shoulders. And I know that she does a lot. And, you know, I can't thank her enough for that. Mm. So she really appreciated you. <laughs> 